everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Well, what does cholesterol and rock candy have in common? Well, if you want to find out, you're going to have to watch today's show as nurse Stephanie Spencer explains. Please welcome her back to the show. How are you doing? Hi there, Chef AJ. Thanks for having me back on. I'm so excited to be here during Bundle Week. But uh, yeah, so I'll introduce myself. My name is Stephanie Spencer. I've been a cardiac RN for 27 years. I used to uh, run an outpatient heart failure clinic for 17 years. That's the number one expense for Medicare is heart failure patients going into the ER. But um, then a few years ago, my husband came home from the doctor one day with blood work showing that he was diabetic. And uh, I was aghast. And we immediately switched to a plant-based diet, reversed his diabetes in a few months. Uh, we both lost 20 pounds. And then I fell down the rabbit hole and um, I ended up getting a board certification in lifestyle medicine. And now I focus on chronic disease uh, reversal and I teach, I have teach classes and I have um, an online course uh, for chronic disease reversal. And, and I also have some stuff in the bundle that I'm going to tell you about. So first I'm going to do a little demo and then I'm going to tell you about my course that's in the bundle. So yeah, our question is what do cholesterol and rock candy have in common? So it's common for, um, a lot of us think when we, when you have a heart attack, that it's just that you get a clog in your artery, like the pipes just clog up kind of like this picture here, there's a clogged up cross section of an artery, right? And, um, but actually in reality, only 10% of heart attacks happen that way by the artery just clogging all the way up until the pinhole closes. The remaining 90% of heart attacks come from a plaque rupture. And these are from actually smaller, unstable uh, plaques that are kind of like this. This is about a 40% plaque. 40% uh, of the um, artery is occluded. And when you're at 40%, 30%, 10%, um, those kind of plaques will never cause chest pain. You will never know that you have those cholesterol plaques. And most of us, if we've been eating a standard American diet, uh, different studies that people have done have found uh, fatty streaks in 100% of 10-year-olds that were autopsied when they unfortunately uh, died in, you know, motor vehicle accidents or, and then soldiers, 22% uh, had gross evidence of coronary artery disease. So we have uh, this coronary artery disease, this plaque buildup for years before decades, before we develop symptomatic chest pain. Um, so yeah, the remaining 90% are caused by rupture, but what causes the rupture? Okay. So have you ever made rock candy before? We had to do it one time for a science experiment for my kids, but basically you mix sugar and water, but you have to keep pouring the sugar in more and more and more sugar until the sugar gets so super saturated that it finally crystallizes into little rocks, right? Well, pathologists notice this same phenomenon uh, when they're doing autopsies on patients that have died of heart attacks, um, they would notice that heart attack victims, here's my little PVC pipe artery, would have cholesterol plaque and it actually had a little spikes, little spikes within the plaque that appeared to protrude out and cause the rupture. And so after noticing this phenomenon for a while, some researchers hypothesized that maybe this crystallization phenomenon is actually the cause of, of heart attacks, of ruptures, which is the number one cause of death in the Western world. And so experiment, or researchers experimented with a supersaturated cholesterol solution in a test tube to see if they could recreate this uh, crystallization phenomenon. And they found that by adding more and more uh, cholesterol molecules, at some point, there was just one drop of cholesterol that was kind of like the proverbial straw that broke the camel's back. And it triggered the tipping point that caused the cholesterol to crystallize. So this is like this saran wrap is going to be like the arterial lining, that endothelium that lines our arteries. And when the cholesterol crystallizes, and it's in a kind of an encapsulated area on the plaque, it actually increased in size by 45%. And it would rupture, you know how long it took? It took three minutes to increase in size by 45%. So it would rupture 
right through. And the researchers placed a, a little faux uh, membrane and sure enough, the cholesterol ruptured right through the membrane, just like it ruptures through our arterial lining called the endothelium, okay? And it's kind of striking to think about that, that it, this happens when you get that one cholesterol molecule that knocks your cholesterol plaque over the tipping point, within three minutes, that plaque will crystallize and rupture. And um, yeah, so, but who cares about test tubes? Does this really happen in humans? That's the question. So researchers did another study. They surveyed autopsies of individuals with coronary artery disease. And there were two categories of people that um, had the heart attack. So one was patients that died of a heart attack. So that was group one. And then group two were people that had heart disease, but they died from another cause and they were compared on autopsy. The um, researchers looked at their coronary arteries. And in the group one and that of the patients that all died from the heart attack, they found out that actually 100% of these people had crystallized cholesterol plaques. And then of the patients that did not, that didn't die of a heart attack, they died of another cause, but they had coronary artery disease. They just had that plaque, but there were no cholesterol crystals in any of the patients that did not have a heart attack. So um, yeah, that's how they decided that it looks like, and that's what the kind of the consensus in cardiology now is that it looks like the, um, the mechanistic action of heart attacks is crystallized cholesterol plaque. So think about that next time you're getting ready to have like a piece of pizza with cheese on it. Think that might be the one little drop of cholesterol that tips your uh, plaque over the tipping point. So where does the cholesterol come from? All animal products contain cholesterol, all meat, all chicken, all fish, all dairy, all eggs have cholesterol. And so the best way to unsaturate these cholesterol plaques is to stop eating cholesterol. If you cut out animal products, you will cut out all dietary cholesterol. No plants contain any cholesterol. So, um, and this was also corroborated by a study of Dr. Uh, Caldwell Esselstyn's. That's a pretty famous study. Uh, he put patients, uh, these, these were all patients that had heart disease, put them on a super strict vegan diet, whole food plant-based, no oil, um, and he was successful at keeping these patients 99.4% heart attack proof. And in this study, he did have a group of patients that kind of fell off the wagon, like they just couldn't handle the diet and they, and they dropped out. Of the patients that dropped out of his study, 62% of them had a cardiac event. So it's, it's a really drastic, um, that's really a drastic study that shows the major difference between um, <laughs> eating plants and eating animals as far as heart disease goes. So let me tell you about my uh, course that's in the bundle. It's called the You're As Old As Your Arteries course. And it's a um, it's a two hour class that I gave before a, a live audience, uh, all standard American diet eaters. So it's, it's uh, I assume I have to convince you that there's a reason to switch to a plant-based diet. But uh, in the course, we're gonna talk about are your coronary arteries more like uh, border collies or like a rabbit's? We're gonna talk about inflammation and the role that plays. We're gonna talk about about high blood pressure, what we can do about that. Uh, we're going to talk about salt, olive oil, coconut oil. We're going to talk about uh, dietary strategies to keep you heart attack proof. We're going to do demos of cooking without oil. And um, also included with this course is my where do you get your protein class? Because I feel that people when they're switching to a plant-based diet or, or contemplating it, they just can't do it unless you can really understand that you can get all of your protein from plants. So I've got a two hour, where do you get your protein class? And then I also have something that you will really like is references for your primary care doctor. Uh, many folks just don't have access to a plant-based doctor and they really love their primary care doctor, but their primary care doctor has never ever seen anyone following a plant-based diet, is not familiar with it. And so, and sometimes they think you're nuts because you're just following another fad diet. These are references from the American College of Lifestyle Medicine so that your doctor can get information from his or her uh, physician colleagues. And uh, that, that reference sheet also has 
a 5.5 hour continuing medical education course for your doctor that is free to learn about lifestyle medicine and plant-based nutrition from the American College of Lifestyle Medicine. So you can just print that sheet off and hand it to your doctor. And so, yeah, that's, that's what my course is. Um, and then I'm going to do a little demo of my, uh, a cholesterol, cholesterol lowering dessert recipe that is also in my You're As Old As Your Arteries course. And so I'm going to show you real quick. I'm going to move you over here, Chef AJ. Don't get, uh, okay, now we're in the kitchen. Uh, Stephanie, right. Stephanie, I thought you were actually going to make some rock candy. I, I'll tell you, I tried to make rock candy for my kids' science experiment and I failed. I could not make it crystallize. So nah, you don't you don't want me being the rock candy chef here. <laughs> you have to put an awful lot of sugar to get it to, to, to crystallize. All right. So what my cholesterol lowering dessert is, it's soy yogurt. These are all things that have been demonstrated uh, by different studies to actually lower cholesterol as much as a statin and as a, a cholesterol lowering drugs like Lipitor or Crestor. So um, yeah, so I'm going to show you how I make soy yogurt every week from scratch and I eat this and plus I'm postmenopausal and, and uh, soy has been shown to really decrease hot flashes. So I use uh, West soy or Eden soy. You just want to use a soy milk that is just organic soybeans and water. And it takes about three minutes to make this yogurt. It is super easy. So I'm gonna pour it in here. I'll see if I can turn my... All right. And we're gonna set our thermometer to 108 degrees, okay? And it doesn't take it long to get to 108. Okay, so there we go. And then we're gonna put some probiotic capsules in here and that's what makes the yogurt. And you can actually get a half a cup of like the yogurt. This is the yogurt that I had from last week. I could just use that yogurt too. But if you're starting from scratch, you just put these probiotic capsules in and in the course, I have links to all of this. So you can just click the links and purchase all the capsules and you don't have to think. All right, so there's my probiotics. Okay, and then I'm just going to whisk it up. And we are up to 79 degrees right now. You might have a little bit of downtime. Are there any questions, Chef AJ? Are there, is there anything oh, coming across there? Look, sorry, I was watching you. Um, Let's see. We should start calling it a cholesterol-free diet instead of a vegan diet or plant-based diet, as, as says Kim Devlin. And is that true? Mm -hmm. is, is all, all, all plants have no cholesterol. Is that true, Stephanie? So, okay. In reality, plants have trace amounts of cholesterol, but not enough to even register. So like, yeah, we say cholesterol-free, but theoretically they have just trace amounts, but animal products have staggering amounts of cholesterol. So you virtually eliminate cholesterol when you eliminate animal products. Um, now plants do contain, you know, uh, like avocados, coconut, nuts do contain saturated fat and saturated fat can raise your cholesterol. So if we have cholesterol issues, we want to really decrease to eliminate uh, the saturated fat components of the plants. Nice. Yeah. So Deborah is saying, I'm rebooting plant-based eating and have to get my blood work done for high cholesterol. Should I wait a week to be fully plant-based before getting my blood work done? Or is it better she maybe gets a good marker now for to show what the What I like my patients to do or my students to do is just get it now. Get it before you switch, you know, and then you have a baseline. And then once you switch over to a plant-based diet, give yourself like three months and then recheck your cholesterol, but go ahead and get it now, like before you've even rebooted your plant-based diet and then start hardcore. You can look at my course and just jump right in and then go as hardcore as you can for three months and then recheck it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I need to take this off the heat. Okay. So that's, that's as long as it takes. It went up to like 113, but it doesn't take long at all. Okay, I'm just gonna give it another whisk here. And then it's gonna go, this is my yogurt maker. 
And in some instant pots, you can make yogurt in, but mine didn't have a yogurt setting, so I just had to fork out the money. This is a, it's called a bear yogurt maker. I have the link to it in my course, but I'm just going to pour it in the little glass jar. It needs to be sterilized, the container that you put it in. And then I'm going to put the lid on and then here, and then I just set it. It goes for eight hours and then... It's ready. I usually, sometimes I'll do it at night or sometimes I'll do it early in the morning. I like to take it out right at eight hours because if it goes longer, it gets to like that Greek yogurt. I just don't like the taste of soy yogurt that's cooked too long. So anyway, then once I'm making my cholesterol dessert, I'm getting out my yogurt. Okay. And I've got a bunch of powdery stuff, which I am not going to divulge right here, but these components are all simple things that research has shown will lower your cholesterol as much as a statin. Okay. And I also put these things in my smoothie in the morning too. So I get them all twice a day. And so I'm going to mix that up there. And this is like, what I like to do is standardize my dessert. I am a sweet tooth. And I always feel sorry for myself if I don't have a dessert after dinner. And so it's easy to just make this and then I just have it every single night. Oh, and you know what? Hold on, I forgot one thing. <laughs> Wouldn't you know? Okay, so I've got my yogurt all mixed up with my secret ingredients. And then for crunch, I always use um, Ezekiel sprouted grain cereal. It's, um, you know, it's all sprouted and it's like just dehydrated. It's crunchy. There's no oil. So I love putting this on top. A little bit of crunch there. And then I'm going to put some blueberries or whatever fruit that you like. Um, I like to put blueberries on. And then you can just put um, like uh, maple, if you want to put a little bit of sweetener, maple syrup or date syrup, or you could mix some date paste into the yogurt, whatever you want to do for sweetener. But this is my super simple everyday dessert, but it's a dessert, but I'm also like lowering my cholesterol with it as well. So that's my, that's my tip of the day for you. And it's all this recipe and everything else is in the You're As Old As Your Arteries course. Yeah, a so, few people that have been on the show this week have mentioned how much they liked the course. Other bundle contributors have mentioned it. And I have oh, a few good. questions, if you don't mind. Janice yeah. says, is there another way to make yogurt if you don't have a yogurt maker? You can buy yogurt at the store. I mean, like you can get soy yogurt. Um, I don't like it because it always has uh, sugar in it and I just can't stand it. And it's got like that carrageen and stuff too. But if you're saying, can you make it at home? You can't, like, I don't. I am not skilled in that, but you can't, I think there's a way you can make it in your instant pot. If you can get the temperature down, but it's got to be at a really low temperature. And some people, I've seen recipes for making it, just Google it, that you can make it in the oven too, if you can get your oven to go low enough. And you can, I think do like, I don't know if it's like a water bath and then you just have jars that you pour your yogurt culture into, but it is certainly possible to do it without an official yogurt maker but this was like i don't know it was like 30 dollars. i mean yeah i don't have the bandwidth to, i like to do the easy button so <laughs> nice and, and is it is yogurt always made out of soy or can it be made out of other things you can make it out of other things but soy um was demonstrated in the portfolio study to be one of the um cholesterol lowering mechanisms it's um like with soluble fiber yeah just asking so, for somebody who has a soy allergy, they're asking. But you can, yeah, you can make yogurt and you would get the benefit from these other things, you know, but you can make yogurt from any kind of plant milk too. Mm -hmm. Nice. Here's another question for you, Nurse Stephanie. Uh, let's see. Uh, Tammy says, I've been strict whole food plant-based for six years, good BMI, but my LDL is 84. What do you suggest? Do this, do my cholesterol lowering dessert. I was able to lower my LDL even further with this formula. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice. But yeah, that's, that's sometimes, okay, sometimes we will switch to a plant-based diet and our cholesterol does not drop 
rapidly like we think it should. And of course, eliminate all coconut. That's step number one. That's usually the culprit. But sometimes people have eliminated coconut and they still can't get their cholesterol down. Then you need to go to your doctor. You need to get checked for a lipo little a and like apo b you need to have a more expanded lipid profile uh to see if there's other uh reasons that you can't get your cholesterol down and if you have lipo little a you need to um you could probably maybe follow up with a, a plant-based physician you know love.life telehealth there's physicians licensed in all 50 states that are plant-based and uh, and know what to do in that situation. Sometimes a regular doctor, when you're plant-based and then you still have an issue, like you're at the end of medical science, like they just don't know what to do. And that's where a plant-based physician or lifestyle medicine physician comes in handy. Thank you. And then here's a question from Kara or Kara. I've been vegan since 2014, cut out all my Cut, out, cut, cut oil out of my diet other than nuts a month ago. Why would my cholesterol go up instead of down from 250 to 254? Oh, wow. So, you know, I switched to a plant-based diet at age 49, right at the same time I was starting the change. Okay. And I really think that lots of times when women go through menopause, that cholesterol level is going to go up. Um, because cholesterol and estrogen are kind of related and your estrogen level goes down. Um, but <laughs> that, that's what it was with me. It was just like the confluence, like my cholesterol was actually lower, uh, when I was an omnivore, but that's when I still had estrogen. So, um, yeah, I think that has something to do with it. So uh, Dr. Clapper, Michael Clapper has a really good video called Beyond cholesterol, Google it. And he talks about the tyranny of the numbers. Okay. And so the question is, is like, again, once you're whole food plant-based and then you still have a, a cholesterol issue, you're like at the end of science. Like, I don't even know if there's any studies on whole food plant-based eaters with elevated cholesterol. But so in the absence of studies, we go by um, anecdotal evidence or expert opinion. And people that are experts in uh, plant caring for plant-based people are people like Dr. Michael Clapper and Dr. Joel Furman, like have cared for people that follow a whole food plant-based diet. They've done that for 20, 30 years. Like I've just seen plant-based people in the last five years. Like all my experiences with standard American diet folks. And um, so Dr. Clapper says that in his experience, he has seen a lot of vegans that um, do still have high cholesterol. And he says, don't be a slave to the numbers, basically. That's why he calls it tyranny of the numbers. Um, a lot of uh, a, another aspect of heart attacks is inflammation. And so you want to cross check yourself with um, like your blood work. You want to first make sure you're not inflamed and you can tell by a C-reactive protein level if you are inflamed or not. Um, and uh, Dr. Michael Clapper says, in his opinion, people that are eating a whole food plant-based diet, no oil, and still have an elevated cholesterol, he says it matters more what you put in your mouth than what the number is. And if you are literally not eating anyone else's cholesterol, you're meaning you're not eating any animals, there's no cholesterol in your diet and you're uninflamed. He says he's never seen a vegan patient, whole food plant-based, no oil patient have a cardiac event, even though they had elevated cholesterol. Although I would recommend that you um, double check to make sure you don't have lipo little a, which is a um, genetic uh, a marker that like, there's nothing you can, well, there's not much you can do about it, but, um, it, that sometimes gives people a really high cardiac risk despite their dietary changes. But if you don't have lipo little a, do my cholesterol lowering dessert, do it twice a day. Um, and that, uh, we, we still want to do everything we can to get your cholesterol low, but if you have done literally everything in the book and you're uninflamed, Dr. Clapper, who has a lot of experience, says, don't worry about it. Well, one of the Instagram viewers, and thank you for watching on Instagram, wildhearted333 says, no oil whatsoever? <laughs> yes, the whole bundle is no oil. So the reason we say no oil, um, first of all, it's uh, oil is not a whole food. Uh, 
once we squeeze the olive or squeeze the corn and to get the oil out, all the fibers left behind and all the phytonutrients, the phytosterols, the antioxidants are bound up within the fiber. So we lose most of the good things in vegetables or olives when we squeeze the oil out, okay? But in reality, the reason a no oil diet is so effective is that type two diabetes and heart disease are widespread in our society. By the time you're middle-aged, 50% of the population is pre-diabetic or diabetic. Uh, and heart disease is the number one cause of death. If you switch to a vegan diet, but you still have oil and you are hypertensive or you are, you do have type two diabetes, you do have heart disease, you will not make much progress in reversing these diseases because they are diseases of fat toxicity. And if you look up on Chef AJ or on my Instagram, Natural State Plant Based, I do a little demo with um, a, a sieve and some lard to demonstrate how diabetes is actually a disease of fat toxicity. It's the fat on the cell walls that causes insulin resistance rather than eating sugar. I mean, I'm not recommending eating sugar, but um, yeah, uh, let's see. Last year I did this on Chef AJ. It was like Nurse Stephanie explains why fat matters with diabetes. Just Google that on Chef AJ. But um, yeah, so if you switch to plants, but you're still getting oil, you won't get the, your bloodstream, the fat level in your bloodstream will not drop low enough to make the fat on your muscle cells melt away and reverse diabetes. That's what that's what um, improves insulin sensitivity is getting that layer of fat off your muscle cells. That's what we found um, really, it, it, that's the distinguishing factor in diabetics is that they have a layer of fat on their muscle cells. We were able to find this with this MR, spectros MR spectroscopy machine. And um, yeah, so you won't make much progress with hypertension, type two diabetes or heart disease reversal if you're eating oil. That's just the brass text part of it. Thank you. Do nuts make a difference in cholesterol? Okay, yes. So nuts, um, nuts do have saturated fat. And I will tell you, nuts or no nuts is highly controversial within the plant-based uh, medical community, okay? Um, Dr. Caldwell Esselstyn was very successful with a strict no nut diet. All right. But um, I think it's Dr. Michael Greger and Joel Furman, a uh, dissent on that no nut opinion. Um, eliminating nuts or, or only having like one nut a day, if, if you're trying to do this uh, like heart disease reversal diet is very useful. Okay. Um, certainly for about six months or so. However, um, I have come to the belief that I think it is somewhat dangerous to go for 30 years without eating nuts. I'll, um, I'll let you know when it's been 30 for me, cause it's been about 15 now. Oh, uh, okay. Well, I mean, and you're probably, I mean, like you, if you can take like a microalgal, um, I, I do a lot of greens. I, I do. I don't mind doing chia seeds. I put that in a lot of stuff and salad. Okay things and all but my you've got your your um omega-3 levels are I fine. Get checked every year and you know what i do is i have dr rick dina who's considered one of the experts and analyzing those blood tests tell me they're okay and he'll i'll even have them on my show also because see i'm not eating any competing omega-6s number one uh, and also I eat lots of, I eat lots of greens. So I was able to maintain actually a better profile when I, since I, okay. Ate. and I will say the same thing that Dr. Lyle always says to chef AJ, <laughs> there are not a lot of people that are like chef AJ. Okay. <laughs> like most people are going to simply be tempted to eat nuts. And so we can't say don't eat nuts and then assume you'll walk away and never eat another nut for the rest of your life. Or, 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 or what I should say is that you will eliminate you'll never have another drop of oil in your life and you will never have any exposure to omega-6. Most normal people are simply going to ingest some omega-6. Okay, yeah, so if you're Chef AJ or if you have an iron will and you can keep your omega-3 to omega-6 ratio one to one, maybe you could go without nuts. But I think that might be somewhat unsafe amongst the normal general population. And so sometimes we just have to, in medicine, we have to just weigh risks and benefits. And I know so many people that are allergic to nuts that have gone their whole life without nuts and they're not dropping dead. 
Like I can think of friends and even friends' children's, you know? And they're, they're whole food plant-based? Uh, yes, yeah. two of them are. So, so the, 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 and, and like granted, and I'll tell you, I don't have personal experience with this because I live in Little Rock, Arkansas. Like I know, you know, like we, we are a very tiny community of whole food plant-based eaters here. But Dr. Joel Furman, who has cared for plant-based patients for decades, it, it's not dropping dead. What he says is that they develop dementia. Um, if they don't have nuts for like 30 years. And um, yeah, that's that's his big concern. And so I I always defer to people that have more experience than I do in a certain area. So, but it is, I will tell you, it is controversial. Like like Chef AJ says, she has got no problems. She, you know, you know Esselstyn is anti-nut, but then other physicians- oh, he's not anti-nut, he's just anti it during the reversal process because people tend to overdo. And I'm not anti right. other people eating nuts. My husband eats nuts all day and he is absolutely right. fine. So Chef AJ, no. what's the reason you omit all nuts? Oh, because the minute I tried to reintroduce them after my 60 pound weight loss, I mean, I gain weight instantly and it doesn't matter if I keep it to a half ounce a day. I just, there's just- You gain weight, gotcha. There, okay. And I, I tried seeds too. There's just something about my makeup and my yeah. genetics that when I eat fat, I get fat. So I do really well sure. with a more McDougal style, uh, true North type of program, but yeah. do what's good for you. Don't do what I'm doing. Yeah. Just, I I'm imagine saying. that would work if you never get any omega-6, like you would keep your ratio perfect and then everything's fine. But I think most regular people are simply going to ingest omega-6 in the course of their daily lives. Right. I'm, I'm, I am a nut. So, you know, what can I tell you? <laughs> Here, here's a nice <laughs> question from Liz. And then we have to wrap up soon because we have one more show today at three. She said, please ask Stephanie if she thinks a plant-based diet can have a positive impact on a functional cardiac issue like moderate aortic, aortic insufficiency. Uh, I, okay, that's a structural heart issue. Um, I, I, I don't know of any research or anything, but my guess is I don't think it's going to affect valves and, um, and sometimes we have valve problems because we have a calcification buildup on the valves. Calcification generally comes from eating an inflammatory animal product diet. And then our body's trying to lay down calcium over the inflammation. And that's how you get calcium on your valves. And then you start having valve problems. But, um, and that's not going to just go away because you're eating kale smoothies. Um, I really think valve problems may need to be addressed. Now, you can have aortic insufficiency or aortic stenosis, depending on your age. Um, we don't have to do a replacement if you are not symptomatic. And we can be conservative on watching your toleration of that aortic valve problem. But um, aortic valve uh, stenosis and like, you know, can cause heart failure. And um, so sometimes we do have to just simply address these valvular problems. But um, yeah, I don't, I, I would, and, and there are still a lot of areas where we simply need to defer to cardiology that um, we can't uh, necessarily kale smoothie our way out of every cardiology problem, mm -hmm. but the arterial disease, yes. I love that. We That's can't. We can't kale our way out of every problem. And I love your new word, valvular. Maybe that is a word. But guys, you know, I have I have three plant-based cardiologists with regular slots on this show. You're always welcome to submit questions in advance for medical doctors at, at chefaj.com. We have on the second Wednesday of the month at 9 a.m., Dr. Baxter Montgomery, a plant-based cardiologist, 9 a.m. on the fourth Friday of the month, which is... Uh, Dr. Monica Agarwal, and on the third Sunday of the month at 9 a.m., Dr. Columbus Batiste. So we got you covered. So Stay uh, Stephanie, is there uh, any vegans or plant-based eaters in Arkansas other than you? There are. We have a little group called the Food is Medicine Club. We actually have, I think I'm going to count them up, 11 lifestyle medicine board certified medical professionals. Some are physicians. I'm a nurse. We have a pharmacist, physical therapist. But we have a little tribe of uh, folks here that are whole food plant based. And um, yeah, we're trying to grow every <laughs> every month. So you just never know. I have doctors that refer patients to me. So um, yeah, I try to uh, 
I try to convert them. I do the best I can. I, I am successful every now and again. <laughs> That's fantastic. Well, thank you for the, uh, oh, what? I was going to let you go. I've got one more question. Then I do have to let you go because it takes about 15 minutes to reset now these days. Okay. It says, any advice for high triglycerides if plant-based? Is it in the course? Thank you so much. Ceylon cinnamon. Mm. Boom. There you go. I'll wrap it up right there. That, that's wonderful. So other than your wonderful course, what do you got your eye on in the bundle that you're excited to dig into? Oh my goodness. Um, I love the bone health course with Sid Notter. That's the, where do you get your calcium course? Okay. And then um, Dr. Laurie Marbase, the um, explaining annual labs that you need to get as a plant-based eater from a plant-based physician. That is invaluable. That's something that your doctors could use. Um, then um, I was actually looking at this morning, like that menopause, the uh, workout uh, plan. It's like, you know, like what to eat, but then also talking about how strength training helps so much with like belly fat and stuff, which I've been trying to do lately. And um, let me think, uh, there's the reversing insulin resistance. Oh, and then of the cookbooks, Broccoli Mums North Indian Cookbook. I made the tofu kofta out of it. Oh my gosh, it's so delicious. I love Indian food, but in restaurants, it's always coated in coconut oil. So yeah, there's there's just amazing, amazing recipes. A ton of dessert recipes this year too. I know, isn't it great? And you're speaking yeah. my language. I love Broccoli Mums North Indian. I, I just print out the ones yes. making this alu gabi. She's got great recipes. Well, it was so yeah. nice to see you again. Next time, maybe yes. we should make rock candy, vegan rock candy. I know. Make it vegan. There you go. Well, it is. <laughs> nice. Thanks so much, Stephanie. Thanks, Jeff AJ. Nice to see you and nice to see all of you. We have one more show number six today. In about 20 minutes, we have Sherry Kalbum coming on and she's going to show you some tricks to boost your immunity.